Hello and welcome to the Voice of Todd. I'm Tom, and today we're going to talk about the latest episode of The Mandalorian. This is uh, season two, episode three, or chapter twelve, The Siege. Uh, I'm going to do a quick recap. I know I'm very these up quite a bit week to week. Um, I'm going to do a quick recap, um, and then I'll I'll do a brief sort of conclusion of my thoughts. Um, so jump straight in. Um, another quick episode this week. Um, quite a bit to discuss, potentially story-wise. Um, but we we open up with quite a fun little intro. Um, again, the Razor Crest. Just can't catch a break this season. It seems is absolutely knackered. Um, Mando has Baby Yoda in the ducts, playing with wires. Funny scene. Um, quite a bit of fun. It does feel very much like Baby Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 ways he's, he's got to arm the bomb to take out Ego um f- yeah fine they kind of seem to be borrowing from everything uh, it, it works it's good um, it was probably more more funny to me because I'd spent about 20 minutes before I watched this episode trying to talk my mother through some tech issues that she was having which felt very much like the Mando talking to the child. So that's probably why I quite like this. Uh, movement for the child again was fantastic. This is obviously a quite a, a specific set. They, they've got infinite space to, to have the uh, the puppeteers moving on them. And it worked really well. Um, yeah, really liked it. Um, but Razor Crest is knackered again, so we need to head back to Navarro this time to get the ship repaired. Kind of sick of every week, oh the ship's got to get repaired, let's go here I'd like them to get a new ship we'll we'll touch on that later Um, but we jump into Navarro which is the setting for most of season one and we're in the Mandalorian armory where a gang has been stealing credits I would guess and stuff and the marshal shows up to kick loads of ass. Now the Marshal isn't Timothy Oliphant from first episode of this season but it's Gina Carano playing Cara Dune again. Uh, Gina's great. I really like the character. I really like her. Uh, she's she's brute force. She's very physical. Uh, the fight scene itself was, was very physical. There is an animal creature ferret thing in there. Um, just a fluff ball. It looked terrible. The movement was crap. The puppeting in Baby Yoda is amazing. And then you've got the tadpole frog thing last week that was crap. And then this, again, that was crap. It, it, it's minor. It's me just picking holes. But it feels really jarring when you've got some really good and then you've got some really bad puppeteering. Um, but this, yeah, so Gina Carano beats up four or five guys and then has a pet ferret uh, we jump to Mando landing on Navarro to be met by Cara Dune and Grief Karga who is played by Carl Weathers again a staple of last season um, Carl Weathers is just fucking cool isn't he he's, he's just oozes cool when he's on screen um, so we get a bit of grief saying he's now the is he the mayor or or whatever the the term was? But he's now running this this settlement on Navarro. Brought peace after the events of season one with Cara Dune as the marshal, and they seem like a pretty good team. We uh, we then get into the real part of the episode, which is pure action, really. Uh, there's an imperial base that they want to get rid of shouldn't be garrisoned by many troops should be an easy in and out mission while the razor crest is being repaired so they leave baby yoda behind uh, baby yoda picture just next to me on here um, i'm looking at it now on my other screen being a little shit again uh, steals the kids macaroons from the class that he's left in um just just they're, they're using him as a how can we make him cute now he's not really doing much he's just being cute and they're trying to get the memes going worked for them season one maybe it's working for them this season it doesn't do anything for me um 
I'd like to find out more about what they're doing with the child. We do get a little bit of a law dump on that in this episode. I'd like to find more as we press on, though. Um, but we uh, we go on this this heist idea, I guess, um, like an old western train robbery uh, with uh, Cara Dune, Grief Karga, and Mando, obviously, and Mithril, who is one of the first bounties that Mando brings in. The fish guy, the blue fish guy who was frozen in carbonite, he's basically in here just to be comic relief. Because there's no Baby Yoda, they're focusing on, on Mithril. Which is fine. It, yeah, it's fine. Um, you need a bit of comic relief. Uh, so yeah, that, that's great. It worked well. Um, we get into the Imperial base. And as they sneak in... No problems. They get to the generator, which they overload, um, triggering the reactors to overheat and basically get destroyed in 10 minutes or whatever it was. Uh, as they're trying to escape, they stumble across what the base actually is, and it's a lab with Snoke clones, well, Palpatine clones, but Snoke clones in tubes, and they find a message from the scientist from season one telling Moff Gideon that they've run out of blood from the child and he thinks that the experimenting should stop Mando says well this has got to be old uh, Moff Gideon's dead turns out the message is only three days old so they now know that uh, Moff Gideon is alive and we're um we're introduced then to this idea that they're building on oh do I have to say it Rise of Skywalker um okay uh, we'll, we'll park the episode run through it for the minute because I really want to touch on the fact that Emperor Palpatine died at the end of Return of the Jedi he was killed by Anakin Skywalker after Anakin was saved, redeemed by his son Luke Skywalker, you know, the hero of the original trilogy. The sequels didn't really happen in my head. Um, that's how I'm able to enjoy Star Wars again. The Rise of Skywalker was a terrible clusterfuck of spitting on a wall and seeing what sticks, basically. Um, and I, I have no problems with the cast. I have problems with the writing, the stories they wanted to tell, and the general crappiness of all their ideas and how illogical everything is. Um, and bringing back Palpatine is the, the epitome of, of my distaste for the sequel trilogy. Um, they should have tried to do something original instead of feeding on nostalgia. So I don't want this series to go down the route of just feeding into the, the sequel trilogy now, which was going to happen. It, it was. But don't do it, because that's not really what Star Wars fans want, and you should know that by now, Disney, because you're not doing so well on the Star Wars front. It's probably why you haven't got any films planned for the next few years. Um, Don't just don't do it. Don't go down this route. We don't need... Just reset the, the... Reset the sequels. Use Mando to do it. And if this is the first block in that, fine. I will forgive. But I really don't want to have to deal with the idea that Palpatine is still alive anymore. Because he isn't. He's he dead. He's dead. He died. Died in Jedi. Back to the episode. Uh, Mando jets off to find the child after the the big reveal that Gideon is still alive, and then we basically follow uh, Dune, Cara Dune, Grief, and Mithril as they escape the base. It's very OT action, blaster fire, and you know there's no real tricks. It's a straight shoot out all the way. Um, it flows really well. I I really like this episode. Um, they get to the so the, the entrance that they came in with 
find uh, an armoured troop carrier and decide to use that to escape. Pursued by scout troopers on speeder bikes. I love scout troopers. They're the, 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 the coolest stormtroopers. Uh, definitely the coolest uniform. Can we get more scouts? Especially speeder bikes, but can we get more scouts? Because they just look so cool. Um, so they're, they're chased by these, these speeder bikes, which they deal with. And then there's ties. These ties, there must be new, new tie fighters. They have folding wings, which is pretty cool. No, I don't remember seeing them before. We may have seen them in Rebels. Um, but they leave the base as the base explodes and chase after this troop carrier. Uh, luckily for our three heroes, Mando, in a fully repaired Razor Crest, manages to find where they are and destroys the three TIE Fighters in some very Han Solo-esque flying. Uh, really cool, really good action. Um, it, it shows why the Razor Crest is cool, and there's a lot of references of, to it being a heap of junk. Uh, the New Republic fighters did it in, in episode two of this season, and this is maybe showing why he keeps it around, and maybe he's a pretty good pilot as well. Um, but that's it. That that's that's basically the episode. Um. Having been repaired, the Razor Crest shoots off, hopefully to find Ahsoka, and really propel the story. There was moments in this episode that the story was moved forward, but it did feel a bit like, or it felt like it had been written into more of a side quest with nods to the main campaign than uh, actually pressing forward with, with where the main story is going. Um, which is fine. Um, one last little bit, the mechanics who fixed the Razor Crest, one of them is working for the Imperials and they um, they have installed a tracker on the Razor Crest so that Moff Gideon has a direct link to where the child is. Teasing up round two, hopefully. Uh, so that's, that, there's, there's, that, there is another bit that follows in from that scene. Um, I did miss, just before we, we get this reveal, a, a new Republic officer, X-Wing pilot basically, um, turns up and starts questioning the locals on why the Imperial base exploded. I get the feeling that the new Republic, had, they're not really taken seriously, and they're certainly not wanted in the Outer Rim. Uh, maybe there's some tension there, but he, he leans into to Cara Dune, who is a rebel, ex-rebel. Uh, shock trooper. Uh, we get a little bit of backstory on her. We find out that she's from Alderaan. Sounds like she got out just before the planet met its ultimate end in A New Hope. Um, and he leaves what looked like a medal, I guess, um, for her or a something, Republic star, um, saying that the New Republic need help from local allies because something big is going on. That something big could be what Moff Gideon's working on, which looked like, uh, if you've ever played uh, Fallen Order, they have shock troopers or, or purge troopers, whatever they were called. Very similar design troopers to those. Big, hulking, almost robot-like. In fact, I would call them, from the shots that we got at the end of the episode, I'd call them Cylons in black armor. That's exactly what they look like to me. You know, the 70s, the proper 70s Cylons. Um, so it looks like Gideon's working on some special trooper. Hopefully we'll get to see them soon. They look pretty badass. Hopefully they've got like a red light that flicks between the eyes. Because Cylons, he's stealing from but I'll Star Galactica now, but why not? You're stealing from everything else in the minute. Um, overall, I thought this was a good episode. The action was great. It was directed by Cal Weathers this time. It's nice that they are having a different director every episode. It's all written by John Favreau, from what I can tell. Um, but we're getting lots of different directors. Um, with last week, it was Bryce Dallas Howard. 
now we've got Carl Weathers. I don't know who next week is, somebody new maybe, um, but they do have a rotation of, of people that's working on this. I think it's really cool that they're, they're doing this because you're getting a slightly different feel in, in each different episode. This one felt very much like a straight up um, action-y, western -y vibe again. Uh, very similar to episode one of this season, which is cool. Um, so yeah, it we're suffering from the length of these episodes again. This one was 35 minutes, so a little bit longer last week. But there's not enough time to really flesh anything out. I would like, as we are on, is this episode four or five of this season. So we're halfway through at this point. I would like a few longer episodes to really get our teeth into what's going on. Put some flesh on the bones. <clears throat> we need more grief and, and Cara Dune in for me. Um, they were the staples of season one and they really made season one work when they're paired with, with Mando. So I'd like to see a lot more of them. I don't feel like we're heading that way. With Mando showing up here and then shooting off, hopefully towards Ahsoka. But it feels like, okay, here's your regulars. Let's move on. Uh, the episodes are just too short to really get any, any big law dumps and give us time to breathe with the characters that we know and love. So I'd like to see some more longer episodes in the next few weeks as we build up to the season finale. Um, and hopefully we'll get a lot more Giancarlo Esposito as Moff Gideon because he's, he's terrifying. I mean, again, he's very charismatic, but in a very different way to, to Carl Weathers. It's, he's not somebody that you you would be comfortable being around, but there's there's something about him that holds your attention when he's on screen. Which is really cool. Um, it's nice that we've got a bad guy like that. I get the feeling that we might not get too deep into him this season, and, and season three I know was greenlit recently. Um, I feel like we might be saving stuff for season three. I hope that it doesn't feel like that as we go forward. And I hope that we can really get into what's going on with the child and more of the Mandalorians and especially with Kate Sackhoff now being an official part of the live action universe. Maybe we can see more of her and her Mandalorians as they try and reunite the clans. And we really dig into that. Um, that's what I want. I don't look ahead to see what's going on next next week or the next few episodes. I don't even know the title of the next episode. I'm hoping it's finally getting Ahsoka. But I'm still enjoying it. Um, this episode flowed really well like the rest have this season. But yeah, it's good. I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Hopefully it'll continue on as strongly as it started. And I don't want to feel that we are getting fillers and side questy stuff from now on as we push on to the end because there's a lot of ground that they need to cover and a lot of things I feel that they need to fill in it's nice to have something to look forward to every week but that's where I'm going to call this one I'm trying to keep these short thank you very much for watching I'll see you all in the next one <laughs>